Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of My Unfair Advantage. We're going to be talking about online business pillars today. We're going to talk about perfecting multiple income streams that support your income. I think a lot of this has to do with your business mentality. And unfortunately, with internet marketing, a lot of people turn to the internet to make money without a business mindset. They come to the internet because they're just in need of money and they heard somewhere, oh my God, you, you can make money on the internet. Well, you know, yeah, you can make money in the internet. And if you want to make money really fast, you can go to eBay and start selling your stuff and make a couple of pennies shipping it away. You know, you could also get an online job, you know, doing surveys and things like that and, and make money that way. But if you're looking to create a business, if you're looking to generate income on a consistent basis, every single month, month in, month out, have money that you can depend on, a real business, a sustainable business. Well, you're gonna have to create pillars, income pillars. Some people call them profit streams. I call them income pillars because you have to create a sustainable set of pillars that are gonna actually hold up your business. They have to support your income. And that's what I'm gonna talk about in this presentation. I'm, I'm gonna talk to you about the pros and the cons. I'm gonna talk to you about the do's and don'ts. And I'm even gonna share my five business pillars. Now, it's not limited to five. I know you're looking at five right now on your screen, but your business might have more than five. It might have less than five. But I will tell you this, the more pillars you have, the more diverse your structure, the more diverse it is. And what I mean, but what I mean by that is, if you've got 10 pillars, and w someone kicks out one of them, the other nine can still support the structure. They can still support the business. If you've got you know, six pillars and someone knocks out two of them, uh, you're a little shaky now. And if you're down to three, you probably can't sustain your income. And, and this is what I mean by having pillars that can actually support your income. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that. Diversification creates long-term security for any business especially for internet businesses. Diversification is when you go and you look outside of what you're doing presently in order to expand the amount of money that's coming in, okay? Diversifying means that you're creating other profit streams, not just depending on one thing to make you money. For example, if you are only, let's say, uh, a grocery store, for example, a grocery store sells a lot more than one product, and there are seasonal items, right? What if you were a store that only sold Halloween items? How would your business be, uh, you know, in July? If you, you know, if you only sell, uh, you know, May and June are probably a tough time for you if you're only selling Halloween costumes, right? But there's other holidays, right? There's President's Day, there's Labor Day, there's July 4th. There's a holiday every single month, pretty much, at least in the United States there are. Uh, and you can actually have a seasonal store that changes the stuff that there's. Now, naturally, some holidays are going to be much more profitable like Christmas and things like that are going to be much more profitable than others. But my point is that if you built a business along just one of those profit streams, one holiday, then you know, you'd know you be struggling the rest of the year. Money would just be trickling and you'd probably have days that you have zero customers whatsoever. So a uh, you know an internet business is not much different than that. When you go to any kind of a department store, they've got all kind of departments. That's why it's called a department store. There's a shoe department, there's a clothes department, there's houseware, there's, this, there's all these different departments. And collectively, they make enough money to sustain the business, right? If if, if it was just one, then it would be harder. It would be it would be much, much harder. But you can still have a specific niche. Like you, you can have a department store in just one niche. For example, a Home Depot or a Lowe's where they just do construction stuff, right? They just do tools. They just But you can even go in there and still find cleaning supplies. You can find some other things. But they tend to be in one specific niche. But within that niche, there are departments. You go to Lowe's, there's power tools, there's lumber, there's, uh, you know, um, washing machines and appliances and things like that. So you, you see my point is even if you have a different niche, even if you're, you know, because you might say to me, well, yeah, Omar, well, the example of the Halloween store, that's kind of silly. Well, yeah, but they they've got it's it's a good point to make because you can still have an entire store that focuses on one one niche like a home depot uh, as opposed to a, a mall that has a whole bunch of smaller stores and and then there's departments within that store okay so my point with diversification is that you are going to apply you're going to appeal to a broader customer base when you're diversified and you're going to have income streams that are going to sustain the structure the business structure so one stream might make a bunch of money today while 
while the other one didn't, and then vice versa. But collectively, each of the streams contributes daily to the ocean that is the income of your business. And any successful internet marketer that's been doing this for any significant period of time will tell you that he or she has multiple income streams. As a matter of fact, it's usually the people that aren't making money uh, or that aren't making money consistently, that live in the feast, feast or famine kind of a bit. And that happens a lot with internet marketing. Uh, you know, there's a lot of feast and famine marketers that are struggling. Uh, you know, you hear them complaining about, oh my God, I'm not making money online and oh, what am I gonna do? I mean, but then they launch a product and they're, oh yeah, I sold 2,000 units, it's awesome, the world is up. And then they use up their money, like, oh God, I'm not making any money online. And then they just have that feast or famine. You know, if they're not launching anything, they're not making any money. That's because they don't have pillars in their business. That's because all they're doing is launching. That's just one pillar. So again, uh, if, if, you've, if you talk to somebody that's been doing a significant amount of time, they'll tell you, no, well, I've got income from my affiliates. I've got uh, continuity. I've got email income. I do coaching. I do this. There's a bunch of stuff that brings money in where collectively uh, they make enough money to sustain themselves long term. Now, don't make the mistake of getting distracted while trying to diversify. Okay, so what I mean by diversification is not that you should go and start uh, a whole bunch of different things at the same time. Okay, there's a very big distinction between distraction and diversification. So one thing is for me to build a business that focuses on, let's say, uh, uh, I don't know, I'm just going to pull something out of the out of the hat here. Let's say you're selling stationery and you started with selling notebooks and and you sell notebooks online but you realize that uh you know your notebooks yeah they're making you money but sometimes you know it drops down but another thing is pens right so you're like okay well now that i'm making a little bit of money with notebooks but it goes up and down let me start selling pens too so then from the pens you can move on like okay well, let me start selling some uh magic markers and and you know you're, you're diversifying but you're still kind of within the whole stationary niche right that's that's diversification now what I mean by distraction is, okay, well, I'm, I'm over here selling notebooks and I'm, I'm building my pillar and I'm, I'm building my income stream. And then all of a sudden over here, somebody comes up, it's like, oh, wow, well, somebody, that guy over there, he's doing real good selling fur coats. He's got a fur coat business and that business seems to be really, really doing good. Okay, so let me go and start selling fur coats. Oh, I can't sell fur coats over here because none of my stationary people are buying. Fur. So let me just start a second store. So now I got two stores, one that sells fur coats and one that sells stationery. Now, now I'm struggling, dividing my time between two business, neither of which was fully established to begin with, and now I'm, I'm, I'm even worse off than I was when I started. But here I was thinking I was diversifying, and all I was doing was distracting, okay? So that's what I mean by that. Now, there is a lot of shiny objects on the internet uh, that, that can take you away from what you're presently focusing on, a lot of shiny objects. And by shiny objects, I don't mean shiny websites like YouTube that are literally uh, just hour you know they just drain your time when you start watching youtube it, you know those websites are meant to to just suck you in and because they you know they they suggest additional videos to watch and you watch one funny google you know one funny youtube video about cats next thing you know the next two hours are wasted on on cat videos and animal videos and america's funniest home videos and next thing you know you're watching you know uh some world star video where a lady at mcdonald's punches somebody out and that went by you know you just you just get sucked into this cavern of viral videos uh, and that's not what I mean by shiny object. That's not a shiny object. I'm talking about shiny objects in your in your actual chosen field, which is uh, you know internet marketing. Because there's products being launched every single day, not one or two dozens of new products every single day. And what you need to realize is that you don't need every single product in order to make money. A carpenter does not need every single type of hammer and nail in order to build a house. Okay, remember that. You, you don't need everything that's released every single day. You only need what you need to fulfill your business plan. But the problem is that most people don't have a business plan. We'll talk about that in a minute. There's a big difference between diversifying through research and expansion versus jumping into something new out of sheer impulse or excitement. Okay, not just a, a funny way to say, or, or rather a more clever way to say, don't jump from product to product. 
you know, because the grass it looks greener because it's launching right now, and a whole bunch of people are talking about that right now. So I'm um, gonna, you know, yeah, I was, I was, I was into Kindle, and I was doing some Kindle publishing, and I was creating, you know, books for Kindle and and selling on Amazon my books, but I've been doing it for two and a half days now, and it's not making me money yet. And and there's this other thing that just launched, and look at this. This looks so exciting. This guy's doing YouTube stuff and making videos and SEO, and, and I'm over here for two days now with my Kindle. I haven't made any money, and I spent a whole $17 on this, and I can't believe it's been two days and I haven't made any money. But man, that, that, that YouTube stuff looks exciting. Look, that one guy said he made $200 in like two seconds after he bought the product. I'm gonna buy that now. Yeah, yeah, and I'll do both of these. And and that's that's the mentality that unfortunately I know. Yes, I, for humor and for the sake of making the point. Yes, I expanded on a little bit, but my point is that, and I'm sure that you can take away from it uh, the intention that I mean, and that is that it's very easy to get impulse or excited about a launch because that's what they're designed to do to impulse you to excite you and to get you to buy. But those of us that have a plan, those of us that are committed to building a business, those of us that are working a schedule every single day, that have that have written down what we're going to do every single day, that, that's part of our plan to complete our goals for this week, which are part of a bigger goal for the month, which are part of a bigger goal for the year, those of us won't be distracted. We'll be diversifying, right? Con conviction, discipline, and a well-thought-out work schedule is going to decrease the likelihood of shiny object syndrome, right? It is a syndrome. There's actually like a series of symptoms that people display when they're starting to become distracted and starting to get attracted to buying something else. And I've learned this in coaching people. And when they come to me, they're like, hey, so, hey, did you see this launch thing that's going on, more?" And I'm like, that's the first sign. Like asking me if I saw about a launch that's going on. And I always say, no, I have no idea. What is that? Uh, and, and like, well, you know, it's this awesome. And then they proceed to tell me everything about it. And I'm like, oh, it looks like you've done a lot of research into it. Yeah, you know, I was thinking about, you know, you know, wouldn't it be good if? It, I'm like, no, no, it wouldn't be good. Just stay, keep doing what you're doing. Where, where, did you plan that when you wrote down your business plan? Did you write down in your plan that today you were going to buy this other tool? No, because you don't need it to fulfill your business plan. So just keep doing what you're doing. The key is a reverse engineered business plan. What is a reverse engineered business plan? You've noticed I, I, I've made that bold because it's important. Reverse engineering a business plan is starting with the end in mind, looking at what is the amount of money you need to make, by when do you need to make it, how do you plan to make it, and then just taking a step back and say, okay, well, what is the stage just before that? So what, what's the goal that I need to hit just before I hit that big goal? And then what's the goal that I need to hit just before that? And what tools am I going to need to get to there? And what tools am I going to need to get over there? And, and how much money am I going to you, you understand what I'm saying? I'm, I'm saying draw out your whole thing and then reverse engineer it, right? So when you're planning uh, anything of, uh, of consequence, right? It, it, any, anything important in your life, you got to kind of reverse engineer it and start with the end in mind. Have a picture of what you want that thing to look like in the end. If you're planning a major event in your life, uh, a wedding, a, 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 any any kind of a, a gathering, you, you know, you, you have a picture in your mind of where you want to be. You start with thinking, okay, well, how many people am I going to invite? Well, I'm, I'm going to want to have uh, this. You start making a list, and that's going to determine well how big the place is going to be that you need to rent. Once you know how big the place is that you're going to rent, well, then you can go shop around and see how much money you're going to need to raise in order to rent that place, right? So this is called reverse engineering. You don't just go and let me, let me just go rent the place first, and then let's see if I can fill it up with enough people. You, you don't you don't start you don't do that the other way around. You reverse engineer any kind of major thing in your life. It, it's just the way that, that we do things. You go to college, you don't just go and start arbitrarily adding classes to your curriculum, to, you know, to your syllabus, uh, you know, you know, and hope you're going to have enough to graduate in a major. It doesn't work that way. You go, you go to a guidance counselor. You say, okay, well, I want a degree in this, and he's going to say, well, you need cr these credits in these particular classes. And say, okay, well, how much time do I have to take? Okay, let me start taking these classes. And then you look at the requirements. Oh, I can't take that class until I take the other one because this is AMP2 and I need to take AMP1 before I take AMP2. So let me go take, you know, there's a plan. You're reverse engineering the plan and there's no difference when you're creating a business. You need to reverse engineer that plan. You don't just jump in and start, oh, well, you know what? I'm going to create an ebook because I want to sell an ebook because I'm going to, and then think, oh, well, I'm a business owner. I'm an entrepreneur. No, you're not. You're one of those feast or famine guys. You know, you're going to, you're going to probably make a little bit of money. And then after that, what? 
you know, and, and that's the thing. That's, that's what differentiates the guy or the girl that's doing this full time, making a living and, and that's able to quit their job from the guy that's just launching a bunch of products and thinking, you know, well, I'm going to be able to quit my job when I launch this product. And unfortunately, that's not the way that it is. And even if you are able to make enough money, God bless you, you made enough money from your first launch and you're able to quit your job. But what's going to happen next? What's going to happen next month or the month after that? You know, again, you got to have a plan. You got to reverse engineering it. Look, if you try building all your pillars simultaneously by yourself, there's a greater than 97% likelihood that you're going to run out of capital and fail miserably. Now, knowing that 62.3 of all, you know, 62.3% of all statistics are made up, keep in mind that that 97% likelihood, I correlate that to the success rate of businesses within the first two years in America at the time that I recorded this. So uh, if you if you say to yourself, okay, well, you know what? Okay, I understand now what a pillar is and what an income stream, and I understand what Omar was talking about when he says, well, he's going to sell notebooks, and he's going to sell pens, and he's going to sell magic markers. I understand that. So let me start doing all of that at the same time. You know what? You're probably going to fail because you haven't mastered the selling of an item online yet. And now you're trying to sell four or five or six at the same time. You're trying to build all these same pillars. You still haven't built one you know, solid structure that you know can support weight, but you, you know, you, without testing your, your fabrication or your, you know, your methods that you have for building, now you're building four at the same time. And then you're going to try to sit on that thing at the end and hope that it holds you up. Right? Chances are, as a matter of fact, you know, greater than 97 percentile of people will fail if they do it that way. You're going to run out of money trying and, and you know, because you can keep buying because you don't you don't have a, you know, if you build one pillar and you, you know, now you have a track record. Now, oh, wow. OK, well, this is how that came out. Well, I would have done this differently and I would have done that, that differently. I spent too much money on this. I could have spent more on this. You know, and now you have a plan to build your second. Your second becomes better and stronger. Your third becomes even stronger yet. And, and this makes a lot more sense to do it this way. But it takes time. It takes time. And someone like we said in the beginning, someone that comes at this without a business mindset they are not factoring time into the creation of their business. They're coming in here thinking, well, oh my God, I've got to make money by tomorrow. That's why I started an internet marketing business, Omar. I gave you my $47 because I need to make a gazillion dollars by Thursday or else, you know, internet marketing sucks and you're a fraud. Really? Oh, okay. You know, and this is unfortunately the the mindset that many people have. Not everyone. Uh, chances are that you're smarter than that, and that's why you're watching this right now. But unfortunately, a lot of people that fail do come to internet marketing with that mentality. They they have a sense of entitlement just because they bought an ebook for seven dollars or whatever it is, and then they they point the finger of blame at somebody. They you know some whatever uh, uh, insert image here of any guru out there. But unfortunately, uh, it, you got to be accountable. You know, ideally, what you want to do is assemble each pillar in your business to the point of consistent, and I made this word up, automatable. Well, maybe I didn't make it up. I don't know. I just, I, I might be a real world. But you want to build each pillar to the point of consistent, automatable profit before you start working on the next pillar. Now, now, does that make sense to you? It, it means that until you've gotten one income stream flowing, and until you've got this thing going, and I know that it's working, you shouldn't jump and start creating the next one. Because now, the likelihood of getting either one of those profitable decreases exponentially. And whenever something has exponents, it, it's going to end in a in a zenith, in a peak, in a peak. It, it's 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 going to end at, at a point where it can no longer sustain itself. It's 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 an incline. So uh, it's it's more than an incline. It's a curve with an incline. So anyway, I'm not getting into geometry here. The point that I'm making is you don't want to do. You know, you don't want to move on to the next one until you've made the first one profitable. And the best and fastest way to do that is to to keep things congruent. Make that make your pillars congruent. Make them be similar to one another. The the you know the 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 notebook seller and the pen seller. That's not a big leap going from one to the other, right? It's in the same niche. But going from notebooks to fur coats, that's a big leap. That's a complete. That's a totally different type of sale, you know. Uh, and and that's the difference that I'm talking about. You know, keeping things congruent, make it easier to scale, make it easier for you to develop a system that you can repeat over and over again. I want to share with you the five pillars in my business. And I want to share with you 
Um, yeah, you know, and, and I'm not stopping at five and I'm not saying that you need to stop at five, but what I am saying is that you should have an idea of what it is that you want to build before you start building. I had an idea of these five pillars. I drew them not to, not to the type of specificity that I'm going to display here, but I drew these income streams out within the first couple of weeks of starting my internet marketing journey over eight years ago at the time that I'm recording this. Now it was a lot dirtier and a lot, you know, I, I cause I didn't know what I was talking talking about at the time, but I knew business, and I, or at least I knew uh, that, that I wanted to have a real business, right? I, I, I don't know, I didn't know at the time as much about business as I know today, uh, but I did know that the money was going to have to come in from multiple places, and uh, this, is, this is what currently we see in our own business. First pillar is launches product launches. So like everybody else, we create products and we launch them. Now this pillar encompasses the creation of information products and software. So software, I still consider it part of the same pillar because we're still launching products on a regular basis. So whether it's a uh, information product, an e-course, a video series, a, uh, you know, whatever the type of product is, it, if, it, if it's something that I'm going to be launching and I'm going to be recruiting affiliates for, I put it in this pillar. This pillar has an up and down income curve. This pillar spikes has, has transient peaks. It goes up when I'm launching. It goes down gradually when I'm not launching. Spikes again when I'm launching. It goes down. So again, this is the kind of feast or famine style. You know, now naturally nowadays our launches are doing six figures and more. So it's not like in between launches there's any kind of famine going on. There's always money in the bank. However, uh, the ink, if we were to look at a graph, the amount of money that comes in and, and the consistency at which it comes in with fluctuates because uh, the money comes comes in when we launch a product in this particular pillar. And again, that type of product or, you know, that all varies, okay? Uh, but th this includes the recruitment of affiliates to promote the product. Uh, and, and, and the one thing with launches is of all the pillars that you're about to see, this pillar is the most time consuming. This is where my 80-20 faults come in. What I, mean, what I mean by 80-20 without going off into a whole other training series about 80-20, um, the 80-20 rule is I, I spend 80% of my time in this pillar and it only brings in 20% of my income. It's, it's, it's the toughest one for me to manage because there's so many working parts in this pillar. It also happened to be the first of the pillars that I built. The second pillar, continuity. These are programs that contain a recurring element that allows us to build a consumer on a monthly basis. This pillar offers the greatest return on investment, both financially and chronologically, time-wise. Okay, so what that means is that I can do the work once, I can build this once, I can build this as I go and add to these continuity programs and then continue collecting money uh, whenever the billing cycle hits. So this is a very profitable type of pillar. This was the first pillar that we branched off of our launch model because literally while we're creating a launch, we can develop product content that is that that we can break down into 12 months into 24 months and we can literally create that over a period of a month uh, and and then now take that content split it up into segments insert it into a, a software tool that's going to drip feed that content to the customers and now we can build the customers on a monthly basis and this is automated it automatically delivers the next month's content to that customer and and this continuity uh, is the kind of thing that provides that consistent income let me tell you something you should look at continuity in your business as your second pillar. Once you've learned how to make money online, create products, when, once you got the launch part down, uh, if this is the sort of pillar system, support system that you're going to build, continuity should be one of the very first things you look to diversify with. And the reason is that, let me tell you, there's no better feeling than on the first of the month or the 15th, whenever your, your uh, continuity hits, there's no better feeling than opening up your bank account and seeing that you're already starting with $30,000 in the bank that month, just because your automated billing hit. Right, and, and that decreases over time. So you've got to continue putting a little bit of work into the continuity, and, and you know, driving some, some traffic to it every once in a while. But in comparison to the amount of time that you have to put into a launch, the amount of money that comes in uh, for the amount of time that you have to put in with the continuity pillar is completely, completely different, and it's so much less of a financial and a time commitment uh, for the amount of return that you're getting on continuity. So this is the pillar that offers the most, uh, the greatest uh, return on investment, and. In 
in my own business. Unfortunately, it's my own shortcoming. I'm trying to get better at it. This is one of the pillars that I don't spend enough time in it uh, because it's it makes money on autopilot. So I tend to, to leave it for last because there's always money coming in there. Uh, and it isn't until it's like, wow, okay, the continuity income has dipped down. Let me, let me go in there. It isn't until I start seeing it. But if I spend more time in here consist consistently, we would really, really take our business to the next level. So something that I'm working on in my own business to get better because I'm not perfect. Uh, the third pillar, affiliate marketing. Uh, once you've been doing launches and continuity, uh, what you'll find is that you have now a list of customers. You have a list of subscribers. You have people that have bought from you. So, so you know, a lot of people go out there and they set out to do list building. And that is not particularly, the, the list building is important and you should have a list building component of your business from day one. Okay, so I'm going to preface what I'm about to say next by saying list building is important. You should be building your list from day one. However, what I'm about to say now is that you shouldn't be only focusing on building a list because growth for the purpose of growth is the etiology of the cancer cell and it only ends up killing the host. You have to grow a list because you know of consequence there's got to be a reason for growing that list and the reality is that you don't really have to set out to grow a list if you set out to launch a product and grow a business a list will happen by default you can't not have a list if you have customers does that make sense so if you just go and launch products and create continuity you will have customers and you will have a list if you only set out to build a list you will not be launching products and you will not have money coming in does that make sense? So if you get into business and you and somebody says to you, well, you need to be building a list and all you're doing is making squeeze pages and driving traffic and building a list, and build, you're building a list for the purpose of building a list. There's no other purpose that you have. Uh, you, you know, just because somebody told you, oh, you're gonna make, you just need to make a list and no, no, you need to mark, you have to have a marketable list. You have to have a list of customers that know, like, and trust you and that will buy more stuff from you. How will you build a list of people that know, like, and trust you? Well, because they've bought from you already because they, they bought in your launch or they bought in your continuity. So now you actually have a list of customers and, and subscribers that actually know who you are and want to buy money from you, want to buy products from you. You have a list that you can make money from by promoting quality products. And that's what I do. I promote quality products to my subscribers via email marketing. This is a lucrative, yet it is a time-consuming way to bring in consistent income. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the lucrative versus time-consuming part. Um, the time-consuming part is has to do with the quality of the product that you're promoting. Um, I, I don't like promoting a different product every day. And it, you'll, you'll learn this by being on my subscriber list. Myself, John Thornhill, Dave Nicholson, a group of us, we're of the mindset where we would rather promote maybe three or four products a month where we get behind the product, we promote it for a full week, we email our list, we let them know, hey guys, this is a launch that's going on, this is a great product, here's why, we've reviewed it, we know the guy that did it, here's a bonus that we've put together for it. We invest time into creating a video to promote the product, we assemble a bonus, maybe we even create a product that amplifies the value and the quality of the product we're recommending. So we invest time and effort into the promotion to the affiliate stuff that we do some marketers out there they don't do that they're just in the business of blasting the list they look at the list as data they don't look at it as people they look at it as names and emails it's just data so they're going to just buy solo ads to a squeeze page in order to accumulate as much data as possible onto their aweber and once they have a couple thousand names in there they don't care who they are they're going to go start picking products out of the marketplace and just blasting the list and that's one business model I, I don't I don't like that business model. That's not very sustainable. I, I can't see myself doing that forever. And how am I gonna build an asset? How am I gonna build a business that somebody's one day gonna pay me a million dollars for? That yeah, you know what I mean? How how am I gonna you know, it's just not sustainable. How am I gonna build a second pillar from that? You know, I, I, I like promoting quality products to my subscribers and selecting them. Uh, communicating with the person that's creating them, making a bonus for them, uh, creating swipes and doing, you know, advertising for that product. That, that 
is time consuming. Uh, and our affiliate promotion, if I had to estimate between queuing up the emails, sending emails, finding the products, creating bonuses, I probably dedicate about an hour and a half to two hours every single day just to the marketing that we do to our list. Um, and it is very lucrative though. I mean, there is a great feeling when you can send an email uh, and, and with one email make $1,000, make $1,500. I've made as much as $6,000 from one email that I send. So uh, it's really, and you can send it on command. Now I, I don't generally uh, promote, I've, I've sent more than one email to my list in a day. Sometimes I've sent two emails, sometimes even three. If there's an important thing I need to tell my people, I email them. I'm not afraid to email my people. If anybody doesn't want to hear from me, they'll unsubscribe and I'm perfectly fine with that relationship. Uh, but I don't mail them three times a day about three different products. Uh, I don't mail them every single day about a different thing coming out because I know that that's just hurting them. It's just hurting their business. Instead, I promote quality products. And, and again, it's lucrative, but it is time consuming. Pillar number four, services. Now, this is cool because this you can leverage time and you can leverage employees. At this point, uh, once you've got launches, once you've got continuity, once you've got affiliate stuff going on, you've developed a brand. You're at the point where people know you, you have a following, people uh, have, have bought things from you. You've been doing this a while now. And this pillar is I can offer to others to do for others what I've been able to do for myself. So obviously if I'm good at launching products, I must be good at recruiting affiliates, I must be good at building a list, I must be good at building a website, I must be good at creating a funnel, I must be good at making sales videos, writing sales copy, or I have a team that works for me and does that, or works with me and does that, right? So there's about seven, eight, nine, ten things in the in the process of, of, of pillars one through three that I can offer to do for others for a fee. And the cool thing about this is at this point, we have people on our team. So I've got programmers. We, we currently have six programmers on our team. Um, we currently have a, um, uh, a, a person that does graphics for us. That's all they do full time. We have an, a, a content creator person. So we, we've got a team of people that we work with. And now I can offer my services. I can offer done for you services like web design, funnel creation, as well as even web video production and other things that are in demand that we've already mastered while we were creating pillars one through three. So now I can say, well, you know what? Uh, I've gotten good at creating the sales funnels and building the launches out. And I know that my launches average, I don't know, twenty-five to $30,000. So it takes me about a week uh, to create the sales funnel and do so let me do a, a uh, I'm gonna offer a package where for $10,000, I will build the website, I'll build the funnel, uh, I'll get on a call with this customer and I'll, I'll see what exactly they need, I'll do a consultation with them, then I'll go away and I'll, I'll take everything from that call and we'll build their, their site, we'll, I'll get my team and I'll get my graphics guy involved, I'll get my programmer involved. So I, I'm acting like a manager here, right? I'm kind of overseeing the process for someone to make sure that they're successful. They have, have now now, uh, th since they had the money to invest, they, they can shortcut the whole time that it took me to build Pillar 1, Pillar 2, Pillar 3, and now I can help them be profitable with their very first launch as opposed to the, the trial and error phase that I had to go through. So services now become something that are profitable. And it, it, I can sell two, three uh, high ticket services, you know, where we do something for, for the client, uh, whether it's a $10,000, I've even sold up to $32,000 packages, but uh, you do a few of those a year and wow, that's, that's a six figure income stream right there just on services. And again, this is something that you're managing. You're, I'm not in there getting my hands dirty. I'm, I'm handing this stuff over to my team. So I'm, I'm doing a consultation call I'm figuring out okay this person needs this this and the other thing then now I go and I go to my team member and I say okay I need you to create this I need you to create this show it to me when it's done I perfect it I assemble it I make sure it's good then I meet with the client again and I say okay here's what we've done here's what we're gonna set up here's you know and and that's the way that we do our services so that's another pillar that you can consider in your business now the other one and this one is very lucrative we make quite a bit of money doing this one but it's the the toughest one uh, to, to do because it is very time consuming. Personal one-on-one -on -one time is my most precious asset. So the pillar coaching, uh, the coaching pillar is reserved for serious clients and, and I price it accordingly. Uh, this portion of your business uh, cannot be outsourced. So when you offer time for your, uh, you know, when you offer your time for money, 
you'll never get that time back. So you got to make sure that you're getting what you're worth. And um, I, I think that, you know, if I'm actually showing up and I'm actually going to be there on the call and I'm actually going to coach somebody and I'm going to teach them exactly what to do and, and I'm going to give them my own advice and I'm going to bring everything to the table that's helped me build a seven-figure business, um, you know, that's very valuable. So I price it accordingly and every time that I do, I'm, I'm giving up a little bit of time with my family. I'm giving up a little bit of time with my, my own uh, business and I've got to get paid right for that. So there is good money that comes in for the, from this but it is not automatable and and scalable in the ways that these other pillars are but i do do it and there is a significant income that comes in from it and you can start doing that as well maybe you're not going to be charging 500 dollars an hour uh, but if you've done something successfully and you've got experience in doing something and you can demonstrate to someone hey this is how i did this you can coach them so if you've built a website if you've built a blog if you've built something and you want to coach them and you say to somebody hey look if you want to get on a uh on a chat for an hour or we could do like a, one of those uh, uh, what do they call that? The YouTube uh, uh, Hangouts. You want to get on a Hangout for an hour and I can share my screen. I can show you how I built this blog. I'll charge you, you know, 40 bucks and I'll do like a training session, you know, until you get it up and we'll, we'll do it together. We'll build your thing. So you, you know what? You just made 40 bucks that hour. You know, maybe that's more than you're making at your job. Maybe you already have a skill online. Let me tell you something. Don't ever underestimate uh, the, the, you know, your power to share something important with someone. You, you, what you think is super easy uh, for you to do and you dismiss it every day because it's just something that you do every day. Somebody out there is trying to learn that. Somebody out there is trying to figure out. Somebody out there is struggling. Somebody out there is willing to pay you to coach them to do that, especially if it's something like these four pillars that you've done before, right? So uh, those are my particular five pillars. They're not the only pillars. There are other ones that I'm thinking of, uh, uh, of getting into, but right now the ones that we are looking at right here on the screen are taking up pretty much all of my time as well as my staff and my wife who runs a business with me. Uh, so right now I am giving in as much of my hours as I'm willing to give in. So I'm not building a sixth pillar at the moment, but these are my fifth, my five pillars. Your five pillars might be completely different depending on the industry, the niche, uh, depending on the sub niche, you know, you might be in Home Depot, right? Maybe, maybe you're the Home Depot niche and you got the drill section and you got, you know, as opposed to the stationary, as opposed to the guy that's selling fur coat and, and, uh, you know, and Halloween costumes, you know, so it all depends. Maybe, you know, if you're in the Halloween costume, you know, coaching might not be a pillar for you. I don't know. So everybody's business varies. The amount of time that it's going to take you to build each pillar uh, is going to vary as well. So you might say, well, Omar, how long is it taking me to build five pillars? Well, I don't know. How long does it take you to build the first one? How long did it take you to get profitable in the first one? You know, uh, you might jump to the second one and realize your first one collapsed and now you can't sustain your, your, your structure. So you got to start over again. So uh, these are my five pillars. So uh, I'm going to talk briefly about erecting your pillars. Your first income stream is going to dictate a lot of the direction that you take in assembling your additional pillars. You notice that with mine, I jumped right into continuity because it made the most logical sense. I, I was already launching products. I was successful at launching products. I said, well, if I just add a continuity angle to this and now I start creating uh, you know, content that could be deliverable within these very sites that I'm launching, heck, I'll build a whole other income stream, a whole other pillar. So that pillar was literally dictated by the first income stream. And, and that's what I mean when I say make your pillars congruent. Make one thing go with the other ones. And the best way to decide, well, you know, how, 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 do I, how did you know that you should go into continuity, Omar? Like, what, what should be my second pillar? Well, the best thing for you to do is look at your customers. Look at, look at who is in your funnel right now, who, whether they're customers or subscribers. Look at, and ask yourself, what else do they need? So they came to me so that I could provide XYZ, whether that was a free item or it was a product that they bought from you. I provided XYZ. XYZ. So now ask yourself, well, what else can I provide them? I'm already successful in making money providing them XYZ. They're already buying notebooks from me. Well, what goes with the notebook? Well, pens or, you know, whatever. Uh, that's, that's how you, you want to look to offer them things that are congruent with the first pillar. 
And there's a big difference between assembling a series of pillars that'll sustain a structure and building a completely new structure altogether. We talked about this a little while ago when I said the fur coats versus the notebooks, right? Those are two completely different stores, right? Uh, so, it, I, I mean, even stores that sell notebooks, you don't generally find a uh, fur coat section, right? Uh, not even Walmart, I don't think, right? And, and usually when you go buy a fur coat at a fur coat store, they don't have a notebook section, right? They don't have a stationary section. So two completely separate stores. You want to avoid doing that at the same time because that's a completely different structure. That's a whole other business. Pillars are not hobbies or niches. They're independent support structures, okay? Remember that. Now, when I said to you, uh, you, you know, you want to build a business that has multiple income streams, they're, they're not like niches. So, for example, let's say you do SEO, especially online. This applies more uh, in the digital world than it does in the physical world, okay? Uh, but, you know, a pillar is not a niche. So let's say that you do SEO. You do site uh, optimization, search engine optimization for websites. And uh, you've got a business where you do search engine optimizations. You make everybody's, you, you know, you make websites rank number one in Google. That's what you're good at. That's what you do. And you're, you're, you're doing it in the car industry, in the car niche. So anybody that's got a car website, uh, you can help them, you know, rank their site. You know, so now you say to yourself, well, I'm going to build another pillar. I'm going to start doing this in the, I don't know, in the basket weaving niche. I'm going to start ranking sites. in the No, you're still in, it's the same pillar. It's still SEO. That pillar can still fall. Meaning, if you think you have two pillars just because you're in the car niche and the basket weaving niche, niches are not pillars. If Google changes their algorithm and now none of your sites are ranking, guess what? Every one of your pillars just fell down. And, and you've got no income coming in. So those are two completely different niches. A niche is not the same thing as a pillar. Uh, the, the pillars are independent support structure, uh, structures. Uh, the business does not crumble when one pillar falls, okay? Now, depending on how many, the more pillars you have, obviously, the less likelihood there is that your entire business is gonna crumble if one of them falls, okay? Uh, but again, keep that in mind. The idea is to get each pillar to sustain the business without you having to be there to hold it, up, hold it up. So in the beginning, as you're building your first pillar, you're building your first income stream, you've gotta be there laying the bricks, you've gotta be there holding it up. Oh, it's toppling over, wait, 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 let me hold it up, let me hold it up, let me save it, let me save it. And you're building that thing up. And, 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 and you know, eventually, it's gonna be solid, the cement is gonna dry, and that's gonna be a solid pillar. The more solid the pillar, the less you need to be personally involved with that pillar. And, and now, once that pillar's solid, you don't have to be as personally involved with it, you can move on to another pillar. But if that first pillar starts crumbling and calling you back, now you've become the person trying to plug the holes in the dam. And now you're running from pillar to pillar, which, which you know, it happens. It happens in your business, right? I, I know I'm a business owner, and every single day I get up, I have five Five number one priorities. They're all as important as the other, I, and I have to get to them as quickly as possible. And it means multitasking, which I'm terrible at. But fortunately for me, I'm blessed with a wife that can do a lot of things at the same time. Unlike me, because I'm a man, I can only do one at a time. But my point is that if you've got a whole bunch of pillars that are crumbling, now you're trying, you're running around trying to support each one, and eventually that structure is going to come down. So it's better for you to build an income stream. Build a pillar that's sustainable and, and, and build a, a pillar that will sustain your business before you move on to building the next one. Uh, and, and that's, you know, in, in, in the, you know, that's the overall uh, picture of the, of the actual pillars. Now, what I want you to do is envision the actual structure, okay? So meaning the actual business that it's going to hold up. Because if you start looking at it that way, now you're reverse engineering it. Right. So if you're just building a pillar for the sake of building a pillar, then I'm just I don't know when to stop building pillars because I don't know how much. So but instead, if you look at, OK, well, how much money do I need? What's the goal? What's the financial goal? What's the business goal? What's the life goal? Where do I want to be now? You know, OK, well, I have to build X amount of pillars, all structures especially business structures, have to start with an idea that generates a blueprint. So in your mind, if you have an idea of the overall structure, so if you know the type of business you want to have, you might say to yourself, okay, well, I envision having an office with 13 employees or 15 employees. I envision that office being on the third floor of this building. I envision having a personal salary of $375,000 per year that I take from my own company. I envision uh, having, you know, 
house here, having, you know, that, that you're envisioning the structure, you're en envisioning the income range, you're envisioning what you need, what you're looking to get. And, and now that you have that vision, now that you have that idea, now you can start to create a blueprint. Okay, same thing goes like when somebody's building a house or an architect, uh, you, you know, or, or you know, home builder. A home builder says, "Well, I want to build this house. This is what I want it to be like." Now he goes to the architect and, and he gives his idea to the architect. The architect generates a blueprint, right? And now there's some company. The architect might say, "Well, wait, hold on. What you're doing here isn't sustainable. We've got, you know, so so there's some modification that happens in that whole blueprinting phase, but." You got to start with an idea. You've got to be envisioning the overall structure first, and then you got to draw out the blueprint, right? Now you should reverse engineer the structure. Begin by estimating the weight that it's got to support, and then work from where, from there. So just like I said, well, first think about well, how much money is that? How much? How, what is the income that we're looking to get? What is the goal? And make it a realistic goal. Goals should be smart. They should be specific. They should be measurable. They should be attainable. They should be realistic, and they should be timely. Okay, there's the whole other webinar about that, but. Um, uh, check the archives for that one. But uh, my point is that it, once you know the weight that the structure has to support, you're going to start to have an idea of how many pillars you have to build and how much money each pillar should bring. Right, so this is the whole idea of envisioning the structure and reverse engineering your, your process. Now, once you've drawn out your blueprint, you've got the business plan, the next step is to come up with a budget and a time frame for the construction. This is no different than when there's a house being built or any structure being built. Logistics, you, you, you know what you wanna build, now we gotta think, okay, well, what are the materials that we're going to need? What what are we going to need? We're going to need this amount of hammers. We're going to need this amount of nails. We're going to need this amount of lumber. We're going to need this amount of carpenters. We're going to need this amount of you know. And and this is literally you designing the structure of your business. You're taking the plan. You're taking the blueprint that you made after you already decided what the structure was going to be like, how much weight it had to support. Now you got to come up with the budget. And, and then once you come up with the you, you know the, the budget and you know what you need, how much money. Now you got to raise the capital. Now you've got to raise the money to do it, right? So this is looking at your business like a business. Now we might be talking about, you know, a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars to do this, or we might be talking about a hundred thousand dollars or two hundred thousand dollars, depending on the size of the business, the size of your structure, how big and how fast do you want to go, right? So create a work schedule for assembling your structure. Everybody can usually do those first three and then where they fall short is the work schedule part. They, they, they write down their goals, they, they're great at coming up with dreams, they're even good at budgeting and saying, okay, well, I'm gonna need this much money and I'm gonna need that. And, and, and you know, you're even good at coming up with the capital and raising the money that you need and saving up to buy the things you need in order to build it, you need, right, okay. So, yeah, that's fine. That's why sometimes if somebody's gonna get married, they plan it out three years in advance. Why? Because they need to, you know, but for the size of the wedding, the price of the dress, when they, they, they need to raise the money. They're paying for things along the way, right? So they had to plan this out. So it would have been a little bit, uh, it wouldn't have been that good of a wedding if they just went and rented the hall. It was the first thing that they did, right? So again, uh, it, it has to do with, co you know, coming up with a schedule for your stuff. But, you know, the thing now is holding yourself to that schedule, having the discipline to, to every day come in and say, okay, well, my plan calls for today. This is what I need to do. And if I don't do this today because I got sucked into a cavern of viral videos on YouTube, then I'm going to fall behind and my structure is not going to get built. You know, that, that, that wall that I was going to build today is not going to get built. I didn't lay down those bricks today because I was watching YouTube videos. So again, this is a business. It's not a hobby. And as long as you keep treating like a hobby, it's going to pay you like a hobbyist. Hobbyists don't make money. Okay. It's not until you become a professional that you get paid for what you do. So that's what a business owner does. They go in, they do business and they don't get distracted. So that, that's really, really important is for you to have that, that, uh, that discipline to actually create a work schedule for assembling your structure and to work it. Then test your sustainability along the way. Okay, as you start building a, a, a you know, building a, a structure, don't just go and build the whole thing and then try to drive some traffic through it or then try to see if this thing is going to hold up weight. Test things along the way. You know, you, you, Rome wasn't built in a day. I'm not saying that you should go and try to assemble a million dollar launch as your first thing that you ever do. Like your first pillar should not be, you know, if you're, if you're doing launches, you, you shouldn't try creating a a thousand dollar coaching program as the first product that you launch dip your toe in the water you know try a ten dollar product try try creating something maybe create a free product and learn the process of
of building the site, of creating the product, uh, of, of putting an opt-in form in there, give it away, drive some traffic to it, maybe learn that. Maybe the next one, create a more elaborate one, maybe charge $10 for it. Then maybe the next one can be a video course. You know, what I'm saying is, Test your process along the way. Don't just create your launch pillar on, on, on one launch that's like supposed to make it, because then you become that, you know, Gloria Gaynor, I will survive, one hit wonder kind of person, right? You don't want to be that person. Don't be afraid to drop some bricks either as you're building each pillar. It's going to happen. You're going to make some mistakes. You're going to take some steps back. You're going to fall on your face. You're in a new industry and it's a very technological industry. So you have to learn some things. You have to, and sometimes, you know, you, you learn something that you learned a, a month ago or two months ago, it, it's obsolete now because something bigger and better was invented. That's just technology okay so don't don't bitch about it don't complain about it don't say internet marketing doesn't work anymore no that isn't the case it isn't the case with your cell phone right you probably have a cell phone that's out of date on your hip right now why because they're coming out so fast you buy the iphone 4 the iphone 6 is out before you know it whatever you happen to fight even here five came out you know and that's the way that it is technology is just advancing very rapidly that doesn't mean that you're slow that doesn't mean that you're stupid that doesn't mean that you can't do this it just means that you need to try to stay ahead of the curve and it needs to be, you know you, you don't be afraid to drop some bricks don't be afraid to make some mistakes you're going to earn as you learn and that's the key with creating your work schedule and, and making things sustainable along the way so uh, in conclusion remember that multiple income streams are required in a successful long-term business okay this is important don't think and don't hinge your success on just one income stream because if something fails there if something goes wrong if if google you know a lot of people do it they build platform dependent businesses if all you're doing is developing apps for facebook and then all of a sudden facebook decides well you know what we're changing our business model we're no longer allowing apps guess what if that was your only pillar you just lost your entire business you're out of work my man now you've got to find something to do become fixated on erecting pillars that are congruent with one another and that will collectively support your business structure. These are income streams, these are pillars, these are what are gonna hold up your career the rest of your life. So it's important that you build them with a plan in mind, that you reverse engineer that plan and that you have discipline in the construction of your pillars. I hope that you got a lot out of this presentation and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.